Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jacob End will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jacob End will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jacob End will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like. Satnam, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jai Govind and this is your channel for grace. Thank you guys so much for being here live and thank you to those of you that are watching the replay. My Wi-Fi is acting up a little bit, but hopefully you guys will be able to hear us just fine. As long as you can hear us, we're good. Um, so we have uh, Raven here and together we are going to talk about a very special thing that we are going to be guiding in our global community meditation hub. So thanks for being with me here. Raven, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited. If the meditation is for 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what we're going to talk so about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you saying? I said it's a commitment, 30 days. It's a it's a longer one than last time. That's right. The last meditation we did in the meditation hub was 11 days. And we were having a meeting in our moon goddess cohort to talk about what is the next, you know, event that we're going to do for the meditation hub, which is a free space, by the way, for those of you that are new to the channel or new to the community, we have a, a community space that's free to join where we host a lot of events such as this one. So we're here to kind of share with you what the Miracle Morning is going to be about so that you can um, make, uh, join us, you know, make a decision to join us. But um, anyways, so yeah, excited to be here. And damn, I'm looking at my Wi-Fi like this is crazy. Can you guys hear us okay? Let me just let me just do a little check in with the connection. And also at the same time, let me just say hi to everybody that's here. I see Jill is here. I see Jeanette is here. Hello, welcome in. Lish is here. So happy that you guys get to be here live. Nancy as well. Welcome in. Um, yeah, so if you are here and you're watching live, let us know that you're here so we can say hi back. And um, <clears throat> okay, yes, we got a yes, we got another yes. Okay, we're just going to keep talking. And if it doesn't work, if the connection is funky and you can't hear us for any reason or it's too choppy, then let me know and I can try to switch over to the other Wi-Fi. So um, back to what I was talking about. We have this free community 
where we host these events. And so we're here to share with you that this is an opportunity if you really want to, um, if you're ready to do a practice with a group, because everything that we do together, we do it as a group. And I think that that's the most, the funnest part about all the things. So we're having our moon goddess cohort meeting and talking about what should we do next. And it's funny because I have been wanting to do the miracle morning myself for a while now. And it's always so much better to do it together with other people. So I, I, presented the the idea to the moon goddess cohort cohort and everybody thought it was great and so we'll talk about what the miracle morning is tonight we're also going to give you some details about it and just share some information so that you know what you're getting into hello maricela welcome in and dawn welcome in thanks for being here you guys okay so what is the miracle morning? Well, there's a book um, that's written by Hal Elrod. I read the book a really long time ago. And it talks about how he went through this really um, sort of a really dark night of the soul. He had gone into this nasty, nasty car accident. And basically, he wasn't really supposed to survive. It was like one of those miracle stories where he survived somehow he broke like a lot of bones and i mean honestly like it was really bad hello um welcome in everyone so yeah it makes you accountable in a group yeah i love that and he realized while he was laying in the hospital bed and he was in the hospital bed for like a really long time like months or something like that you know um he started to really i mean he had a lot of time to think you know about a lot of stuff and one of the things that he knew about himself is that he's not the type of person to give up. You know, like just because he was in an accident, he didn't feel like he it was the end of his life. And he was actually re-inspired to heal and to move on with his life and to, you know, find success in his life in his own way. And he tells his story of like, how the power of the mind and learning how to think differently really helped to inspire him to heal his body and also to heal like a lot of aspects of himself. And eventually he discovered this practice that he was doing every morning by himself and realized that he was having a lot of success and it was actually something really, really simple. And he called it the miracle morning. And it really consists of like these six different activities that you do. And you do each of them for 10 minutes. And so the practice takes an hour to complete every morning. And you have to do it in the morning. So you wake up and if you don't have an hour when you wake up, then you have to get up a little bit earlier, you know, so that you get it done in the morning because... It's about setting an intention for the day. And really the only way to do that is to, you know, do it in the morning. And a lot of us, you know, have, you know, I'm not going to say issues with willpower, but I will say that it is difficult to keep up with a practice that like goes on for every day. And this is the kind of um, practice that's so easy to follow that it'll be, and it's all so fun to do that you won't have any trouble with it. And I'll tell you my, my experience with the miracle morning. Cause I, I did the miracle morning years ago. And I remember I was in a time in my life where I was kind of desperate and I was really looking for, um, a, a big change. I needed a big change in my life to like completely, rearrange everything and find a new direction because like my relationship wasn't working anymore that I was in. I wasn't in the financial place that I wanted to be in. I wasn't happy. I was like really kind of confused about life. It was really a tower moment for me. And I discovered this book and I don't even remember how it started, but I, I read the book and I was like, okay, I'm going to do the miracle morning, you know? And so I did it for 30 days and it completely changed things that I wrote down 
that I wanted in my life that like literally came true. And one of them, which is really crazy, was I I was kind of ridiculous about like what I was kind of wishing for. And I was like, I'm just going to go all out and I'm just going to wish for the thing that I want, the exact thing that I want. And I remember back then I was like, I want a white Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. (laughs) And I was like, that's what I want. That's my dream car. I was like, you know, I want a dream car and that's it. So I'm going to I'm going to ask for that car, you know, And and I kid you not like within a year of doing the practice, I had that exact car. And how it came to me was really fun, a fun story, but I'll save that maybe for our orientation that we're going to have specifically together next uh, Tuesday. But I basically, it, it came true. And a lot of the things on my like wish list came true. And it was because of my determination and being inspired to do something to change my life. And I know, and maybe you can share with us too a little bit, Raven, that going through those big changes and big shifts requires dedication and it requires commitment. And sometimes that's hard because, and also a lot of us have undefined um, ego centers, you know, in our chart. And so it's hard to keep promises even to ourselves, but this practice made it really easy to kind of Put one big intention for your life into little bits and pieces every day that will, you know, collectively make a big difference. And yeah, so do you want to share with us a little bit about moments in your life where you've had to make a big change and you had to commit to doing something different and and how it ended up? If you have a story, yeah. uh yeah, even just like meditation. I mean, I have had so many tower moments that I knew that my life needed to change. And so I'm actually just now getting to that place where um, I can ask for what I want when maybe before I didn't feel like it, I could mm-hmm. because I had so much inner work to do. But it actually, the practice, any practice, it kind of sends out the message to the universe like hey i'm ready to receive what i really want and so i that's the that's the message that i really get that's i've i've done yoga i've i went through my tower moments i knew my whole life had to change and then once it changed i'm like well now what do i do and so yeah i got into spirituality i started reading books and doing yoga and meditation and even just um having breakfast you know i wasn't a breakfast person i still had to get up and eat breakfast even though i didn't want to so it's like these little things it it vibrates out into the universe and you eventually match and then you get what you want. That's how I see it sometimes. Mm, I love that. Yeah, thank you. And it's so powerful when you commit to doing something that just means a lot, you know? And that's the thing about any kind of practice that you do on a daily basis is that you you have a goal, you know? And for example, we've done a lot of um, like multiple day meditations and practices. And I remember, for example, last year when we were doing our, you know, the prosperity practice for level three of the moon goddess training. I mean, and look at everyone now, you know, like so there has been so much growth in everyone. And that was a very intentional practice. And when you bring intention into it, it really activates like the universe just kind of clicks and turns on and you open doors. And you were mentioning that you felt at some point that you didn't deserve it or something, or like you weren't ready for it. You didn't like feel enough, like you, like you were good enough for it. Um, And then all of a sudden it was like, you had to build up your, your strength. Honestly, it's, I mean, it's like the self-worth is something that we have to build up ourselves and it takes time. And so I've learned, for example, in Kundalini yoga and Kundalini practices that you have to do something, you know, for multiple days, they say 40 days, right? This practice is 30 days, but you can definitely do it for longer. And and you might, you might realize that 
this is something that you might want to do for the rest of your life. Who knows, you know, it might end up feeling that good, you know, for you. But either way, um, this is, this is something that will catapult you because it's that intentional. And the fun thing about it is that it's actually designed for people who are like really busy. Cause I remember when I was reading the book It was like, I didn't have time to do all these things. You know, I don't have time to exercise and meditate and read books. And, you know, so it was like he designed it for the busy life. And he realized you just need to do a little bit of each of those things every day and you'll see a huge shift. So especially if you're like a busy bee and you got a lot of stuff going on, you can do this practice and it'll like completely change and like revolutionize your idea of like whether I can do it or not because you absolutely can. So that's that's our little kind of introduction into what, you know, what the power of this practice. And I'm excited because it does help keep you accountable when you are doing it in a group. So let me give you a few of the dates that are important. And again, we're going to have like an official orientation on the 10th of October and that will be within our private community it's it's this is free to join um, but we wanted to share with you here on YouTube so that everyone that's interested can get an, a chance to come and join us so they can make you know so there's enough time for everyone to come to that um, orientation but basically um, we are going to have an official orientation where we're going to do the practice together just to see what it feels like and to like share and ask questions about it. And what we're going to do is I, I have, a, I will have a video that we're all going to follow along with to do the practice every morning. So honestly, you don't even, you, you're not really going to have to do anything other than just like turn the video on and like follow the instructions. So I'm making it even easier for you than it was, for example, when I did it, I had to time myself and everything is like 10 minutes and stuff. But anyway, so it's that simple. Like we will all have a video to follow along with. You just turn the video on and do the practice and then finish and you're done. Like you're done doing your miracle morning. So, um, but the practice, we're going to begin on the eclipse. I had like, I had that thought when, when Raven and I were talking about it, I was like, why don't we start on the eclipse and why the eclipse? Because this, this season is kind of crazy. <laughs> Libra season is, is being like disposited by the South node right now. <laughs> the South node being in Libra makes it so that everything is being kind of channeled through the energy of the South node, which is karma and um, healing you know, soul contracts, mo letting go of the past. And it's going to feel, and it's going to feel heavy. So if you have a practice that can support you during the eclipse season, it's going to be that much better, right? So that is um, what I'm excited about. And so we begin on October 14th. We have an orientation on the 10th, an official, we're going to practice together, all of us live on Zoom. And, um, and tonight we're just kind of introducing the whole concept of it. So let me share with you, what are the things that we're going to be doing? So the practice is an hour long, so you're going to need a whole hour to do the whole thing, but you'll be surprised at all the things you get done in one hour. <laughs> because the way that this works is there's six different activities. Like I was mentioning, one of them is exercise. Another one is, um, visualization another one is a journal and i'm going off of the original things i'm trying to remember how they were it's exercise journaling uh visualization meditation affirmations and reading but what raven and i did is we got together and we discussed what best fits our community like what are the practices that, that are the, the community that we have are looking for and needing and a lot of us are into the spiritual practices, into meditation. And so we kind of designed it thinking about all of you guys in mind. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna just kind of, we're gonna describe each little thing that we're gonna be doing so that you get a general idea. So the first thing is we're gonna do the, the exercise, right? 
And the exercise um, part, we chose to do the lost Kriya of Yogi Bhajan. Now, that's a Kriya that we're actually doing in level three right now. So those of you guys that are taking level three right now, we're going to do that as part of our practice. Literally, it's like a around 10, 12 minute long practice that really gets your body moving and it gets your heart pumping um, very, very quickly. I mean, it's not intense, but it's like you definitely feel like it's you're doing an exercise and, the, and, and it's about prosperity and activating prosperity and calling in miracles. And it uses the mantra, the Guru Guru Wahe Guru, Guru Ram Das Guru, which is the mantra of miracles. Yeah, Nancy says she loves that one. You too, right, Raven? Yes. Yeah. It's catchy. It's a fun one. <laughs> so so the mantra is Guru Damdas, who is the guru of the heart chakra. He's the fourth seat guru, and he brings in that energy of um, very powerful uh, bringing in and calling in miracles into your life. And so this is the miracle morning. So we're going to start with a bang, you know, and like do the lost Kriya of Yogi Bhajan every morning. And then we're going to sit down and do this practice that's called recapitulation. Has anyone heard of recapitulation? Let, let us know um, in the chat if you've heard of what this is. But basically, I read about this practice when I, a long time ago, years ago, when I was reading um, the Carlos Castaneda books, the, you know, the teachings of Don Juan and the sorcerer and stuff. And it's it, basically what it is, is a practice of like soul retrieval. If I could kind of sum it up, it, it's basically like soul retrieval. You, There's a technique and we'll teach you and a breath work and we'll teach you exactly how to do that. And there's a process of preparing to actually do it. You actually have to make a list of different events in your life, um, good and bad events, like traumatic and good events, doesn't matter. Just any events, major events or even small events that you could remember that have really kind of marked like intense moments in your life. And during the practice, what you do is you kind of go back in time and you observed, you observe it as if like you're watching a movie and then you um, get into the first person perspective. Like you actually go back into the memory and kind of relive the memory. And then you watch the memory as if you have a detached view of it. And then in the end, you make whatever changes need to be made within that memory and you take your power back or you apologize or you forgive or you, whatever it is, you kind of put in the, the intention to, to, to change. It's like you're going back in time and changing the past. And I've read a book uh, by Teal Swan called The Completion Process. And we just had a class on the healing the inner child with Jason. And so those of you that took the healing the inner child class, this process is very much like the completion process of Teal Swan, except the Teal Swan process is much more involved. And the recapitulation of Don Juan is actually a lot simpler and it might be easier and quicker to do. So we'll be working on recapitulation which is actually really powerful for literally, I mean, a lot of us, the reason why we have these sort of like limiting beliefs or doubts is because of trauma from the past and like trauma from our childhood. So when we're able to go back and heal that, literally like by going back in time and doing the soul retrieval, you will change the present and you will clear. And that's exactly what working with the South Node energy is. So I don't even, so this is amazing, you guys. Like if, if you don't join us, I don't know, you're crazy. This is gonna be really cool. So anyways, we're gonna be doing this recapitulation practice. We're gonna make a list. We're gonna work on that list. And then when we actually do the practice together, you're gonna pick one thing. And for that 10 minute period of recapitulation, you're gonna work on visualizing that one image and you, it'll be guided to. So that's what's gonna work. Um, then we're gonna be journaling and I want um, Raven to talk to us about what is the power of journaling? Why is journaling so important? And your experiences with it too. Um, well, journaling in itself is is so closely linked with recapitulation, I think. Because, and especially this one, it's only 10 minutes. So it's it's short. You don't have to journal until your hand falls off. I mean, 
it is a way to get out maybe some emotions that that's how I would write. A lot of my emotions would get put down on the paper without me even thinking about them. And then I would go back and read and it felt like closure to me. It was a way to have closure. It was me looking in that first person view, the observer view of what I just wrote and it being so powerful. Even sometimes I would be like, who wrote this? Um, and it's just this amazing, beautiful way to um, get your emotions and your feelings out on paper to look and read them. And maybe even I used to read them out loud so I could hear myself uh, speak the words and it was even more powerful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we do journaling for a lot of different stuff for uh, manifestation and but uh, going with the recapitulation for journaling, I, it's just going to be it's going to be super powerful. And this is the this is the most beautiful way to say, hey, I do have time for myself. This is 60 minutes for me, not for my kids or husband, wife. I mean, my job, anything. This is for me. And it just raises up that vibration of inner and outer work um, and just telling the universe, I'm here for this. I'm I'm here for this. I'm ready. Mm, I love that. It's like, yeah, the ultimate self-care. You could literally say it really is. Um, yes. So it is beautiful that the recapitulation is followed by journaling and obviously we'll be writing about you know our experiences and you might have some pretty profound experiences with the recapitulation so like a lot of healing and, and that's what we want we want this to be focused on what we need right now during this season hence why we're starting with ecl the eclipses you know it just it kind of fell on our lap like that and i knew that it was meant to be because of that so and then the next thing that we do is we're going to do a guided visualization that's actually going to be um, energy clearing and clearing the auric field. This is actually a practice that we do in level two and level three of the moon goddess training. And it is amazing to be able to work energetically on yourself because that's literally what it is so we're not only like going we're not just doing like soul ritual we're also doing like energy work on ourselves and learning how to do that for ourselves and clearing and clearing and clearing and imagine how your day is going to go after like completely clearing your energy field you know cleaning cleansing all the chakras like seeing what's balanced what's unbalanced you know what do your chakras need and also like how to clean the the energy space around you i mean we are such sensitive beings especially in our community specifically speaking of that we have a, a lot of difficult times you know sometimes um getting removing what's not ours like we take on a lot of energy from other people from interacting with other people a lot of us are very empathic and so we feel um, other people's emotions and clearing your energy and doing this as a daily this should be something that we all do on a daily basis so we're gonna you know we're adding that to this so that that it's part of this whole experience and then we're going to do affirmations. And you want to talk to us, Raven, about the power of affirmations? Affirmations are literally powerful. It, I mean, even if you say, I'm going to do the laundry, you know, I mean, it's like it, it sending out your vibration. Sometimes I'll say it not out loud, but hearing yourself say the affirmation it's like your own frequency is going into your soul. You are hearing yourself say the affirmations. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't too big on like guided meditations and affirmations because it's so powerful when you write your own, when you speak your own, and it comes right from the soul. Mm -hmm. But letting the universe hear you, hear that this is the vibration of this affirmation and I'm trying to think of some more rhyming words for that, <laughs> but putting it out into the universe is going to know where your vibrations are. Yeah. And, um, 
Yeah, the power of thought, you know. And 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 speaking that thought into reality and this, you know, this is a a, there, a huge part of manifesting and why we have trouble manifesting is because we desire all these things, right? And that desire is tied to the future. And the future doesn't exist. Only the present exists. So when you when you change your perspective and bring the desire to the present moment via affirmations, because this is one way to do it, then th- you actually magnetize what it is that you are wanting, desiring in your life to this moment. Y- you bring it to the present moment instead of it always being out there in the future that if you think about it, it doesn't, it will never get to the future, but because we're always here in the present and the future is just an idea. And so there's that, that connection between actually thinking about something, but actually making it real and then connect that to human design and the throat center and how all of the centers are looking to be expressed. And the expression of it is the manifestation. So all of these things are just so intricately connected i mean this is like a power practice we should call it our power practice you know what i mean so yeah and then the last thing that we're going to be doing is reading a book and so basically it'll be like 10 minutes of reading and then you just get to grab whatever book you're reading and then and read for 10 minutes and a lot of us are like well i don't have time to read and blah 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 blah. i don't have time to exercise i don't have time to do this i don't have time to do that but this is like, you're going to do it all and you're going to surprise yourself about uh, how easy it is and how rejuvenated you're going to feel with this practice. Like I, the, I when just talking about it, I'm like, damn, this is going to be the shit, <laughs> you know? Yes. I love power practice. Yeah. That's a, that's our, all, that makes me have energy right now. I know. It's our power practice. Okay. So... Yeah, super amazing. And then I, you're probably going to want to keep doing it. But to do it together is going to be, and to do it during eclipse season is going to be the most, the biggest support that we can have f- during this time. Like if I'm completely honest, it's like it's what is going to make the biggest difference. So that's what I'm really excited about. I'm excited to do this practice with all of you guys. And we're okay. So the other thing we're going to do is we're all going to be, you know, watching along, doing the practice along with the video every morning ourselves. So we just pick a time that works and we just turn the video on and, and do the whole practice. And then, um, once a week during those 30 days, we'll, we will meet and share our experiences how we're doing, if we have any questions, if we have any, and once a week and discuss what, what's, what, what, what's coming up, you know, what are we feeling? So I'm really excited about this. And me too. Yeah. And I hope you guys are too there. I think there's a link below. If you want to join us, it's totally free to join this is like some of the th- this is a, an example of what the kind of things that we offer in our community which is like who does this stuff for free right um yeah okay so if you look in the description where it says join our free channel for grace global community that's the link you want to click and you're going to have to create a login and a password and once you do that you'll be in the community and you'll find on the left hand side in the menu bar it'll say the meditation hub and also there'll be an events tab and all of the events will be in there and you'll have access to all of them because everyone in the space, everyone in the entire network has access to all of the free events. And what I, I recommend that you RSVP to all as well as the meetings that we're going to be doing once a week and then add those um, to your calendar so you don't miss those times. However, if you do have to miss something, we are definitely going to be posting the replays of everything. So I'm making it really easy for you guys. <laughs> like we're making it really easy and I hope that you feel inspired um, to to join us and 
Yeah. Anything else you want to share? Um, I don't know. I just really want to stress the importance of making time for yourself. It's, it is just so important. Even if it's just one hour or maybe just, you know, it just make time for yourself. It's so important for your soul. It's important for your soul work. And ultimately that's what we're here to do is, is soul work. Mm. It's so true. And right now more than ever, I feel like this is, this is something that is needed. So if we can take care of ourselves in this way, everything, I mean, not only our own lives will feel better, we'll feel better in our own lives. We'll feel more confident because I know I felt more confident. I felt, I felt exhilarated about life after doing the miracle morning. And it just, there was just something about it. And these are the things that make, that are going to make the difference. You know, it's when you put in the commitment to do something powerful and intentional, and then it just, it happens because you mean it, you know? So yeah, it's going to be amazing. And the fact that we're going to be doing it together is going to be even better. So come join us. I am going to be creating the orientation event so that um, we can all get together, do the practice together and um, ha answer any questions anyone has before we officially start on October 14th. And yeah, also today's kind of an intense day. Um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about that too. There's Mars is making a conjunction to the South Node and it's kind of heavy and it's kind of intense. So we wanted to pull some cards, just do a little quick collective reading. So a message from this energy that we're speaking of, this solar eclipse that's going to be happening on October 14th when we start this practice is going to be happening with the South Node. It is a South Node solar eclipse. It is also a new moon. So it is a time of setting intentions. Eclipses are a time of revolution in our lives. And so this is the perfect timing for all of this. But today, having Mars being conjunct, the South Node is significant because I feel like it's giving us, um, there's a lot of glimpses. You can also feel some frustration as well with this transit. For some reason, I feel like we are, we are being forced to really look at this aspect of the past, our past, what we want to heal, what we want to change, and putting and knowing that the only way to do that is through that Mars frequency of actually taking action to make things change. So we're going to just pull a couple cards for you guys um, to see what the message is from Mars. So I'm going to shuffle real quick. And if you have cards ready, feel free to share. I'm going to pull a Gene Keys card. And I think I'm also going to pull one from the other deck as well. What's our message for today? I have the, the arc from Bernadette King's, the big animal oracle and tarot deck. And so I am shuffling and the whale pops out. And the whale is judgment. So it means rising up, clarity, awakening, and mercy. And I mean, the whale is the biggest animal in the ocean. So this meditation that we're going to be doing is going to call us to, I'm hearing, grow up. Learning from those things that we don't have closure on or, or things that we did that we're still beating ourselves up for or... Um, the, yeah, it, it's going to call us to mature and, um, yeah. And I think the South node in Libra is, is really, it's not just happening to us in the spiritual community. It's happening to everyone. And I really think that this ego part is, is breaking down. Like people aren't afraid to ask for help anymore. Like I recognize I have a problem. I need help with that. And I mean, that's just amazing because it's the first step. Community. 
And that was one of my big intentions for creating the global community was for us to have a sacred space that wasn't, you know, bombarded by outside forces. And this is exactly what this is. So check this out. You were talking about knowing when to ask for help. So we get the 54th gene key, which is the gift of aspiration. The shadow of this gene key is greed, interestingly enough. The gift is aspiration and the city is ascension. Greed is an energy that will compromise its own integrity in a flash to get what it wants. And this is its downfall. My gift to you. I bring the gift of aspiration. Look long and hard at the ways you're still driven by fear competition and the desire to serve yourself this is a very mars conjunct south node message i come when it's time to start thinking about how to serve others and how to join forces in order to create a healthier more sustainable world call out your inner robin hood start giving back think holistically find creative ways to more justly redistribute the resources on our planet if you don't have money, donate time, energy, wisdom, and love. Remember, if you've been holding on to what you've got, this is a good time to let it go. Wow. If you've been resisting others' generosity, it's a good time to receive. Keep it flowing and it will thrive. Dude, that's wild. So what I'm getting from this message is that this practice it's so important for us to always put up, put ourselves first when we're doing self-care practices. But the fact that we are doing this is like the, that prayer that I say, like the, the, the merits of our practice will, will help other people. And that is true because we're shifting our energy. We're shifting our, m our mental state. We're shifting our, our body. We're shifting our like, you know, frequency, we're like lifting ourselves, we are moving from the shadow of greed, which is like, I just want, want, want. And that's different than I am going to activate this frequency and manifest what's really truly like the highest possible, you know, thing for me. That's different than greed. And so I feel like we are moving through this shadow of feeling like we want, 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 and maybe want things that are not necessarily the, the best intentional things to what is really truly what we need and so we we're aspiring to move higher we are aspiring to ascend and i think that's such a beautiful message and then we got um the page of swords which is really beautiful in in this is about a curious curious energy this is also about being ambitious and and our ideals but what i love about this card is that on this card is a moth and it's just interesting so i've been i told raven when we first started the video that i'm like reading 10 books <laughs> but i've literally read three books in the last like week i just finished the third one and i'm starting to read like anyways but the moth is known yaki indians like don juan's group as the knowledge and that the moth carries the knowledge of the sacred knowledge of the universe. And I think it's so funny that this card is popping up for us right now. Plus it's the swords too, which is about, you know, the mind and um, being able to recognize. And I think the gift, like knowledge is power, but the knowledge that the moth represents is the knowledge of the secrets of the universe. And when we practice something like this yeah right we it's like i feel like this is telling us that we are going to through this practice receive the knowledge and the secrets of the universe and kind of free ourselves to expand our mind even further so that curiosity will really kind of grow and, and activate with this practice so there you go such uh freaking powerful messages so I want to thank you guys all so much for hanging out with us tonight. And um, I really hope that you join us again. This is a totally free practice that we're just offering um, for you. And yeah, we, we hope to see you there in the global community. 
And we hope that you have a beautiful uh, rest of your day, rest of your week. We're also going to be doing mini readings on Friday, Raven and I. So make sure to join us on Friday. And um, Olish says, my father gave me those books when I was young. Are you serious? Oh my God, that's crazy, Lish. Yeah, those books are no joke. That's so cool that your dad gave that to you. Um, but anyways, yeah, thank you, uh, Raven. Um, no, just come check us out in the global community. There's so much going on there. And um, and we can definitely hold space for you. Mm, love that. Thank you. All right, you guys. We will see you again very soon. Satnam.